Hey guys, how's it going? Mr Mitchell here. In this video we're going to go over four worked examples to show you how to do problems involving combining forces. Now if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic and that way you can apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. Question 1 says calculate the resultant force in each case. Well in part A we have forces in one dimension, so we've got 50 newtons to the right, but we also have 90 newtons to the right. So to find the resultant force we simply just need to add them together. So the resultant force is 90 plus 50 which gives us 140 newtons to the right. So remember we need to define the direction as well. For part B we've got 70 newtons to the left, but 40 newtons to the right. So this time in one dimension we need to subtract the 40 newtons from the 70 newtons to find the resultant, and that gives us 30 newtons to the left. Doing a similar thing in question 2, it says calculate the resultant force in each case. So for part A we have 4 newtons to the right on this side, but then we have 6 newtons to the right on this side. So that's the same as 10 newtons to the right. In part B we have 5 newtons to the right, but 6 newtons to the left. So if we subtract 5 newtons from the 6 newtons, we end up with 1 newton to the left. For part C we've got 12 newtons to the right, but 12 newtons to the left, so they actually just cancel each other out to give a resultant force of 0 newtons. And lastly part D we've got 16 newtons upwards but 30 newtons downwards, so subtracting the 16 from the 30 gives us a resultant force of 14 newtons downwards. Question 3 then says to calculate the resultant force acting on the object. So this time we've got 40 newtons up the way and 30 newtons to the right, so this is not as easy as dealing with forces in one dimension, this time we're adding force vectors at right angles. So what we want to do remember is add force vectors nose to tail, and then we want to use either the scale diagram or the calculation method here. So I'm going to use the calculation method, so let's draw a little sketch first of all. So we've got our 30 newtons vector there which I'm going to call A, and our 40 newton vector here which I'll label B, and I've joined those nose to tail. Let's then mark on the resultant vector going from the starting to the finishing point, and I've labelled that with a double arrow, and then let's label that side C, the unknown, and we've got our right angle in there and our angle theta next to the starting point. Then we can find the magnitude of the unknown side C using Pythagoras, so we've got C squared equals A squared plus B squared, substituting in the numbers gives 30 squared plus 40 squared, which equals 2500, and then doing the square root of that in your calculator it gives 50 newtons for the magnitude. And then remember for direction we want to use tan theta, so we've got tan theta equals opposite over adjacent, so opposite the angle is 40 and adjacent to the angle is 30, so we've got 40 over 30 which is 1.33, and then to find theta we do inverse tan of 1.33 to get 53 degrees. But remember that's not the direction, that's just the angle so far, so we need to use that angle with compass points or bearings. So we can say that the resultant force is equal to 50 newtons at 53 degrees north of east, or 50 newtons at a bearing of 037. So how do we get north of east and 037? Well let's look at this one first of all, there's our starting point, there's north, there's east, so our resultant vector there is 53 degrees round from east towards north, so it's 53 degrees north of east. And then to write it as a bearing if you prefer to do that, you again want to start at the starting point, and remember that is a bearing of 0, 0, 0, and we go all the way around from north 0, 0, 0 to the resultant vector. So that is going to be 90 minus the 53, which gives us 0, 3, 7. Lastly, question 4 says by scale diagram or otherwise, calculate the resultant force acting on the object. Hint, combine the forces in one dimension first and draw a sketch. So you'll see we've got four forces acting here, so we've got 40 newtons to the left, 50 newtons to the right, 40 newtons upwards and 60 newtons downwards. So let's combine the forces in one dimension first, so the horizontal forces we can combine and the vertical forces we can combine. So if we simplify it, we're going to have 10 newtons to the right and we're going to have 20 newtons downwards. So let's draw that on a simplified sketch, so we've got our 10 newtons to the right and 20 newtons downwards. Now just like in question 3, we now want to add these vectors nose to tail, because right now they're not joined nose to tail. So we want to add the force vectors nose to tail, and just like before we want to use either the scale diagram or the calculation method here, because the question said by scale diagram or otherwise. So we're going to do the calculation method here, so let's start off with our sketch. So we've got 10 newtons to the right, and I'll label that A, and let's draw our 20 newton vector down the way, and I'll label that B and we've joined them nose to tail. Then let's sketch our resultant vector going from the start to the finish point, and put a double arrow on that, and then we can label that side C, the unknown, and then we can label our right angle and our angle theta next to the starting point. So to find the magnitude, remember we use Pythagoras, C squared equals A squared plus B squared, and put in the numbers gives us 10 squared plus 20 squared, which gives us 500. And then doing the square root of that to find C in your calculator, we get 22 newtons. 
Then to find the direction, we use tan theta. So we've got tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. So opposite of the angle, we've got 20. Adjacent to the angle, we've got 10. So we've got 20 over 10, which is 2. We can then find theta by doing the inverse of tan. So that's inverse tan of 2, which is 63 degrees once you put it into your calculator. Now we need to write down our final statement with the angle as either a compass point or a bearing. So let's see what that would give us. The resultant force of 22 newtons at 63 degrees south of east or 22 newtons at a bearing of 153. So let's see how we get south of east and a bearing of 153. So if you look here, we've got east that way and then our resultant vector is down here more towards south. So we can use our angle and say it's 63 degrees towards south away from east. So it's 63 degrees south of east. Or if you prefer to write it as bearings, we can start at 000, i.e. north up here, and we can go all the way around until we get to the resultant vector. So that would mean we're going through 90 degrees here, and then we're adding on angle theta to 90 degrees to give us our bearing. So we've got 90 plus 63, which gives us 153. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.